Have you seen the news? Broad spectrum sunscreens don't provide complete protection. This isn't really new news, but it's getting a lot of press right now, and for a really good reason. This is a major problem that you need to know about, and I've got everything covered for you in this video, and of course, my top product recommendations to address this problem, all linked below for you. This is exceptionally important for darker skin phototypes. Now, this issue is even more problematic because there currently is no standard for how to include this ingredient in sunscreens or how to measure its level of protection on your skin. But don't worry, I am going to give you some advice and tips for how to make sure that you are getting top-notch protection. Spoiler alert! Most sunscreens do not contain this ingredient, so you really are going to want to check your own sunscreen after watching this video. Here we go, in super simple, easy to understand terms. The problem with sunscreens, starting with light from the sun. Sunlight is made up of three types of radiation, ultraviolet radiation, visible light, and infrared light. The UV radiation part of sunlight is the one that you hear about all the time, so much so that you might think it makes up all of the sunlight or it's the only part that matters. But that could not be further from the truth. Did you know that the UV portion of sunlight makes up only 5% of the total amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface? So it turns out that your broad spectrum sunscreen is only protecting you from a portion of that 5%. And some sunscreens don't even protect against all of those UV rays in the UVA and UVB spectrum, which is crazy to think about. And what about the other 95% of sunlight hitting your skin? Visible light makes up 50% of sunlight and infrared light makes up the other 45%. So to summarize, your broad spectrum SPF rated sunscreen is protecting you only against some of the UVA and UVB rays and not the other 95% of visible light and infrared from the sun. Remember, SPF is a measure only of how well a sunscreen protects against UVB rays, not even the complete UV spectrum. UVB rays are primarily responsible for skin burning. So the SPF is only a measure of how much protection you get from burning. It doesn't measure how much protection you are getting against skin cancer, premature aging, or hyperpigmentation from the sun, because those all involve a different part of the sunlight spectrum outside of just the UVB portion. But unfortunately, this single SPF measurement is the only thing that we have to go off of when judging how well that sunscreen will work. Now can you see why we need way more transparency in sunscreen formulations and more information on labels about ingredient percentages and the level of protection against the other forms of sunlight? This would revolutionize the sunscreen market and drastically improve our skin health. So why should we care about visible light, which makes up 50% of total sunlight? Because visible light causes changes on your skin, such as pigment darkening and erythema or redness. It does this by activating melanin, which is the pigment part of your skin, and other photoreceptors in your skin that further drive melanogenesis or new pigment formation. So visible light is creating dark spots on your skin and making your already present dark spots even darker. Now, visible light causes greater hyperpigmentation in skin of color than in light skin tones due to their higher melanin concentration in the darker skin types. So more melanin means more targets for the visible light to act on. Now, studies show that this actually happens in real life. In fact, pigmentation effects can last two weeks after just 15 to 30 minutes of exposure to visible light from solar radiation. And another study showed that it could take up to three months for hyperpigmentation to resolve after irradiation of the skin with a portion of the visible light spectrum. It is also demonstrated that pigmentation from visible light is more intense and sustained than UVA1-induced pigmentation in dark-skinned people. Now, I want you to also understand that almost 
all of our visible light exposure comes from the sun. We also get some exposure to portions of the spectrum like blue light from electronic devices like the smartphones and other screens, but the cumulative dose of blue light emitted by these low intensity screens does not reach the dose needed to cause hyperpigmentation. So we need to focus on protecting our skin from the visible light from the sun. Currently, most sunscreens do not offer protection against the visible light portion of sunlight. Instead, sunscreens contain UV filters, either organic, which are also called chemical, or inorganic, known as minerals like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So these protect against UVA and UVB rays, but not visible light rays. Now, the inorganic filters can provide some level of visible light protection if the particle size is big and chunky, meaning that they are not nano or micro-sized. However, the larger particle size means a chalky, white, pasty look on the skin. And most sunscreens are not made this way because no one would use them, meaning that these more cosmetically elegant versions have less visible light protection. This is not good. But there is something that we can put into sunscreens to give you incredible protection against visible light and skin darkening. This ingredient is pigment. These are known as tinted sunscreens and they contain metal oxides such as iron oxides or titanium dioxide. This pigment protects your skin against visible and UV light. And this has been proven in many studies. Daily application of tinted sunscreens reduced the appearance of cutaneous hyperchromias, meaning dark spot conditions, after just 60 days. And another study compared the use of just iron and titanium dioxide pigments to a non-tinted mineral SPF sunscreen. They showed that the metal oxide pigments alone protected against visible light pigmentation better than the sunscreen. And yet another study compared a non-tinted sunscreen to a tinted sunscreen in melasma patients. It found that the tinted sunscreens were more effective at improving the melasma and preventing relapses compared to the non-tinted forms. This is very compelling evidence. So you want to look for the words iron oxides and titanium dioxide on the label in the ingredient section, not the active ingredient section. Iron oxides can exist in a few colors like red, yellow, and black shades, but in sunscreens, it is the yellow form of iron oxides that gives it the various skin tone pigments. And this is what protects the melanosomes in the skin. So in summary, Tinted sunscreens reduce the visible light transmission by 93 to 98%. A sunscreen with just SPF alone is not enough. Remember, this is especially important for darker skin types. Even if you don't usually wear a sunscreen because your skin color is naturally better protected against UVB and you don't really burn, you are more prone to hyperpigmentation due to the high melanin content. So this is all the more reason to start wearing a tinted sunscreen or some form of iron oxide coverage or foundation on a regular basis. So here are my top recommendations for tinted mineral sunscreens to protect your skin way more completely and reduce dark spots. My number one pick hands down is Avene Solaire UV Mineral Multi-Defense Tinted SPF 50 sunscreen. I am recommending this for very specific scientific reasons in addition to it being a very cosmetically elegant product that just feels great on the skin. First of all, this is tinted with iron oxides, but what stands out the most about this compared to all the others is the placement of iron oxides, which is much higher up on the ingredients list. Usually you will see that all tinted sunscreens that have iron oxide in them, it's usually the last ingredient on the list. Maybe that means that this one packs more of a punch in terms of protection, which is definitely what we are going for. 
Now, it is true that you need a certain high enough percentage of iron oxides in the product to give you adequate protection against visible light. The percentage of iron oxides in products is not listed on the labels, and there is no standard in terms of formulation or what is required. It is not like SPF. So we, as the consumers, do not know how to compare iron oxide content between products. We just have to guess and hope. But with this particular product here, I feel very confident in its protection and formulation, so this is my number one recommendation. You can see this sunscreen is very pigmented because of the high concentration of iron oxides in it. Once you rub it in, you can see that it blends nicely into the skin and can work for various different skin tones. While this is a little dark for my fair skin, I really like this one for darker skin types. This is a rare find. If that isn't enough reason to get this product, let me tell you about the antioxidants in this sunscreen. This claims to have a 200% boost in antioxidant protection. This becomes extremely beneficial when looking for a sunscreen that has complete protection and does the absolute most for fading and preventing dark spots and melasma. When you add antioxidants to a sunscreen, you significantly reduce the free radical formation on your skin. One study showed that topical application of a sunscreen containing an antioxidant complex reduced redness and hyperpigmentation after exposure to visible light and UVA. So this product by Avene is lightweight, it absorbs quickly, it's non-comedogenic, and it is great for all skin types. This also contains niacinamide to protect your skin barrier and reduce redness. This contains bisabolol and allantoin to soothe the skin. This has approval from the Skin Cancer Foundation and the Eczema Foundation, and it's safe for infants, children, and adults. This one is linked below. Make sure it is this particular one that you get because there are a few options on their site, but it is this one that is my top pick. Avene also makes an amazing sunscreen foundation hybrid product that claims to prevent pigmentation induced by visible light. It is 100% mineral, SPF 50, and contains iron oxides and titanium dioxide pigments. This comes in two color shade options. I love this one in addition to the Solaire sunscreen because this compact is great for reapplying sunscreen throughout the day, and it can take the place of your makeup, which creates an even more finished look than just the Solaire alone. This is an amazing all-in-one product, and it's great for travel and on the go. I cannot stress enough how important it is to reapply your sunscreen throughout the day, especially if you have melasma and dark spots. Applying it once in the morning is just not enough. So get a product like this compact to take with you and use throughout the day. This one is linked below as well. I have several more tinted sunscreens at different price points that I linked below for you. I also have videos on several of these sunscreens where I do an in-depth product review, so check those out as well. I hope you found this educational and perhaps it even changed the way you think about your total sun protection. We need more education on this topic, more public awareness of what your sunscreen can and can't do for you, and more research to learn how we can better protect our skin and treat pigmentation disorders. After all, it's way more than just SPF, and that's what I want you to really take away from this video. Make sure you stay up to date on the research that is coming out about sunlight and sun protection. I'm looking forward to advances in sunscreens and the visible light and infrared range, better cosmetic formulas, and the addition of more antioxidants to sunscreens. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss all of these updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.